punch period. So one thing I will tell you as a trader is I don't force trades. <laughs> and uh, I really try to just not just make it happen just because somebody's like, ah, you know, dance monkey. So I won't actually see a trade in the market that lines up with my trading system if I'm going to do it. Um, I know, Morgan, me and you one time, we were doing a webinar, and it was actually a, just a pure, we're just doing trading webinar. And uh, somebody kept going, where's the trade? Where's it? They were just going off. And uh, I wouldn't do a trade. And then all of a sudden, like, right in the last 15 minutes that we saw a trade, we hopped in, we made like a couple hundred percent on the trade. So if we see a good trade, we're going to take it. But uh, we're not going to force a trade. And I know as a trader, you can easily get just so antsy. Um, want to take a trade, want to take a trade. But you, you want to make sure you take the right trades. Um, trading should be somewhat boring to you because you go in and uh, when you do that, you know what you're doing, when you're doing it, step by step. And uh, I'm very, very systematic about the way I trade. And uh, hopefully, you know, I can help show you some of the ways that I'm systematic. Like I said, if we see a good entry, we'll pull it in. Right now, I'm starting to see all the indices. Uh, yeah, they're starting to turn around. Uh, you know, a good uh, thing that's really helpful, um, I have this up in our trade room right now. We're trading, um, you know, every day. And uh, it's called the Broad Market Index. And it's one of those things that if you're trading an indice during the daytime trading hours, okay, the normal New York session, you should always have the Broad Market Index up. The Broad Market Index is the net shares of the New York Stock Exchange. And... Uh, what it's doing is all of the stocks in your stock exchange, how many are up versus how many are down for the day. And I'm not so much concerned with the number, like is it a you know a high number or a low number. I'm more concerned with a couple of things. One is the trend, most importantly. So where is the trend? Is the trend up? Is the trend down? So as you can see right here, you know if you're trading right now, we had you know a nice uptrend going on in the market. We we opened up and we had a nice uptrend, but we just broke that uptrend. So things are starting to turn back around uh, right now live. So on the indices, I'd be very hesitant. I'd, I'd be, you know, stepping back, um, not as confident in a, just a long trade all in on the markets. Um, if I'm trading on the, you know, like say the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, or the Russell, I always have this up. And I also simultaneously watch all four indices um, in the market whenever I'm trading them. I don't just trade one of them independent of all the others. And uh, by doing that, I'm able to keep myself out of a lot of bad trades because maybe I'm in the one indice that, for whatever reason, is just lagging behind. The other three are going down. That one's sort of trying to push up at that last point, and it'll save me from a lot of bad trades. So a couple tips I can give you is if you're trading a U.S. market, I don't care if you just like the S&P, all right? Have up the other four, you know, have all four major indices up, Russell, Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and also have up the broad market index. It's a great gauge. It's a great barometer. Um, you can get it in TradeStation, um, you can get it in Thinkorswim, you can get it in NinjaTrader if you have the right data feed for it. Uh, and we even have a whole video inside of our website, I'll show you how to get access to that uh, for free, okay? So um, we have, a, basically we're big on free, so uh, we're sort of like with TradingPub on the education side, I'm going to show you how to get access to everything for free, okay? And uh, hop in and free training, free trading room, everything, and just sort of see how it all works, put it all together. Um, but uh, huge indicator. Now, as it start, if it starts turning back up, that's where you can start getting some more confidence, potentially in a long entry. All right. But uh, if you have a TOS trading account, uh, yeah, I'll show you real quick. So we'll just uh, you know a couple live things along with some of the other lessons I want to teach you today. Uh, how many monitors do I use to watch the markets? I have two supercomputers and I have eight monitors on each. So, <laughs> but um, I'm not watching all of them all the time. I just don't want to have to open things. I want to be able to take a glance and go, oh, there's the bond markets, there's the forex markets, there's the futures markets. I'm paying attention to four market, four monitors throughout the day. I just have the other ones up so I can glance over and look around and see specific things. I'll have new streams up on other ones. Um, but four is, to me, four is the ideal optimal of what uh, is helpful. So, but uh, anyways, let's see here. And I, I get all my computers. We just did a big thing with uh, FinEdge. Uh, but I don't know if you, if you're looking for a trading computer, this is, and this is not so much a sales pitch, just to help you. Uh, this is who makes my computers. Uh, FinEdge.com. This guy like graduated from MIT or something like when he was 19. Uh, really cool guy. I met him at the New York Trading Expo uh, last year. And uh, they go in and they have all sorts of great stuff 
on here. They got enterprise workstations if you're just trying to get that basic new computer going, but you want a true trading computer. And they got the ultimate, you know, professional series. You know, I have 16 cores, 64 gigs of RAM, liquid cooling, all that stuff. And uh, they run silent and they're solid. Uh, I even called a tech support last night, like at 7 o'clock, and they helped me fix something up on it. It, was, it had nothing to do with them. It's just something got on my computer and they helped me clean it up. But uh, anyways, if you're looking for somebody, FinEdge, awesome to use. And uh, if you're looking for a trading software um, or a, a virus software, let's see here. I know they have it. Because most virus softwares, you know, will eat up your computer like crazy. And uh, they have a software called ESET. You can get it from them a whole lot cheaper than you can in most places. They probably had it. I bet it's in their newsroom. Let's see here. But, uh, yeah, antivirus. So there we go. So really, really helpful um, right there. Just some, you know, practical trading tips. So, but right there, um, finedge.com. And there's the uh, software. You get, you get it for like 40 or 50 bucks. It's cheaper than buying it direct. Uh, $49. And I installed it. It cleaned like four things off my computer. And I'm really careful. Like I don't even do my email on my computer. Okay. Uh, but much better than things like AVG, which is free, but it actually is a virus, antivirus. It takes over your computer. But uh, just some cool stuff. And they have a. They even made like an Apex. And we don't, you know, get anything here. But they made a. They made like an Apex version, a little bit of an upgrade version. What is it? Slash Apex. So a lot of my traders want one, and you know, to, we have purple and red for our colors, so they put purple in there. And uh, so if you're looking for that, just um, I, I love these guys. It's, they've made, I, I've bought computers from pretty much every major trading computer company out there, and I can tell you, hands down, best service, best computers. And uh, there's nothing like having a bad computer today to either cost you a lot of money or uh, to cost you, uh, you know, money by missing out because you're spending like all day on your computer issues. So um, it only takes one bad day to pay for a brand new trading computer. So I'll tell you if you've been, if you traded futures at all uh, or even Forex. So um, ABG, I said avoid ABG. So don't do ABG. Um, it's one of the worst things you can do for your computer. All right. So question, um, do I trade all day? Uh, I probably spend a few hours a day trading. I am watching the markets all day. Um, I do radio shows. I do education. Uh, but I am, yes, I am trading every day. And, you know, I could trade all day. I could trade 24 hours a day if I wanted. I couldn't trade 24 hours a day. I could trade like at least you know, 8 to 10 hours a day. I'm in our trade room 8 to 10 hours a day because we have guys that come in there in the morning. We'll have guys that come in there in the afternoon. Um, and it's always open. And we have several uh, other traders that I've trained, and they're just traders, just like you. And they're leading the trade room, moderator traders, and uh, something like that. But, yeah, the, the reason I use ESET is because David, like, they went through and they analyzed. They took, like, 30 different virus software programs. They analyzed them all. And not only is ESET fast and accurate, but also it, uh, it, it automatically lowers itself on your processor utilization so it doesn't slow down your computer. So it's actually really, really good for uh, – you know, using that. But, uh, all right, so back on topic over here. And like I said, I have a few charts up. I'll look out and see if we, I see anything that uh, looks like it might really, might really be a great opportunity. And if so, then we'll, uh, we'll grab it and take it there. But uh, professional traders, what is their secret? Uh, and by professional, I don't mean somebody who trades for eight hours a day, even though you can. And sometimes I do. If I see, I mean, the Dow yesterday, I was all over that puppet, man. I was having a great time, Okay. Uh, and I'm going to go, Diane, I'm going to go right into my entry uh, management systems. Very systematic, very, uh, I teach style, uh, and I teach system. And one of the things I teach for my trading methodology is that it should be like 90% system, 10% style. Uh, because unless you have a massive account, you don't have the luxury of just adding in, adding in, adding in. Okay? <laughs> you, uh, you need to be very fair, and even that can be, you know, dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And uh, so I try to teach people to have very systematic. Define, this is my exact price where I enter. This is my exact price where I put my stop loss. This is my exact price where I throw my stops. And this is exactly what I do step by step along the way. Okay? And then, of course, there has to be a reality in a system where you have some room. And when I say some, I mean some room for style. And style should be more of a when to get out, when to not take a trade, you know, when to tighten your stop, not a when to get in. So... If you start trading from the gut on entries, 
I'm sure y'all have found out that that can be pretty painful. Because when it works, it works, and when it doesn't, it really doesn't work. Because the problem is, when you're trading from gut, when it, basically you're trading from opinion, you want to be right. And you try to prove yourself to be right, and that's when you let your losses run and your, you know, you don't let your profits run. So, because you'll take that profit quick, because hey, I was right, and then you won't take your loss, because you know you want to be right. And so, the, I let the system manage my trading. I use the style to have a reality check in the process to go, hey, you know what, Fed funds rate is about to come out. I need to be aware of this. You know, that style. It's news, fundamentals. Uh, a deviation move on a day is a good point at when I need to, you know, look at possibly, you know, taking some profits, getting out. And I'll show you an example. Like on the Dow yesterday, we were trading that. And I mean, the Dow's doing okay today. But uh, yesterday, with the Fed funds rating and everything, and um, some calls I made on the air, on, live on the radio. We'll have a radio show I do every day as well. It's broadcast into our room. I'll show you where to get that. But uh, professional traders, they see the market differently. They look at themselves as a supplier versus a consumer. Okay, so instead of like all these fancy indicators that tell you buy here, sell here, when this moving average crosses over this golden ratio, this fib level, uh, you know, on down the list, they look at where are all these things converging. It's what we call confluence. And they go, there's going to be a lot of orders there. So instead of going, when it gets there, I'm going to get in. I'm going to go long. I'm going to go short. Which, think about it. How often are you right about that? You're right a lot about it getting there and you getting in. Now, what happens afterwards, you know, that can be hit and miss. But you're right a lot about it getting, when it hits that support line, that resistance line, that fib level, that pivot level, that whatever magical thing you got going on. When it hits that, which everybody else is looking at it also, okay, then I'm going to buy or sell. What if you step back and you go, when it gets there, oh, it's going to probably get there. Why? Because orders are what drive the market. The market exists to fill orders. That's it. The market exists to fill orders. And so wherever the orders are going to be stacked and located, that is where the market's going to go. If it can't find orders, it's going to go in the other direction, okay? And so when you do this, okay, you should be going looking to get out when it hits those price levels. And that's how they're looking at the market differently. And it actually has to do with an ebb and flow. It creates one pattern. I don't use 20 patterns. I don't use 15 different chart patterns, candlesticks, whatever. I'm not saying that's wrong or right. Whatever. I just found I couldn't find consistency personally and be able to duplicate that over and over when I did that. And I actually narrowed everything down to, you know, one pattern. Um, as far as the guy before me, Rob, he's an awesome trader. He's a crazy awesome trader, okay? Um, he has a lot of style, and there's a lot to learn from him. He's a good guy. I have nothing negative to say about him at all. Um, I have a lot of respect for him, and, like, we traded in competition side by side, trade completely opposite of each other. He was buying. I was selling. We both made money. We both made about a thousand bucks. I think he beat me by like a hundred dollars or whatever. It was awesome. It was really cool. Um, and we have completely different styles. There's a lot of different ways to trade. It's not like there's the, the one way to trade. It's just I found that this was um, the easiest way for me to trade every day. I sit down and without a doubt I know what to do step by step. Okay? Uh, and so that's what I'm going to sort of show you how I do my trading every day. And if you like it, you can try it all out for free. Okay, um, and then another thing they do is they filter out the noise. Um, we're going to go into this. You'll uh, you'll find this out. It's really really cool. Um, a way to filter out noise because there's certain things that don't make sense that we do every day as traders that we just haven't stopped and thought about. Um, and they also have proper expectations to expect the market to go to the moon. If I see a live trade, Joe, I will show it to you. Um, but I got to see one. Okay. I'm flat right now. Um, proper expectations of market movement. So they have an expectation of where the market's going to go based on actual statistical analysis. Okay? And when it's exhausted, they stop getting in. They know to tighten stops. And so like something that I do is whenever a market hits a deviation, I'll show you an example. Like here's the Dow from yesterday. Okay, even from today, right here, I'm going in, 
I'm going short on the market. I got a few trades here. I got you know, a little trade, break even, got 30 points, got about 30 points, a couple break even trades, one small loss, grab about 80 points on the Dow, grab 130 points back on the Dow. But two things I can tell you is here's settlement and here's one deviation. And I use what's called implied volatility. Okay? So implied volatility is expected movement built into option pricing. And on our server, we pull all the implied volatility out of the underlying market's options. We calculate that deviation. It's not a standard deviation. Standard's yesterday's movement. Okay? It's not pivot levels based on yesterday's movement. It's implied deviation. It's how far does the market say the market's going to move today? And these things are insanely accurate spot on day after day after day. And so it goes on down. We're getting right down here, right within one deviation. We turn around. Again, this is after the Fed funds rate. Fed funds rate came out, like, not rate, but, uh, you know, minutes came out, flew down to that one deviation, and then flew right back up and hit settlement, and then flew right back down here. We get right here to the close of the day, 415, and we end with one deviation on the trade. Okay? So just having that proper expectation of when not to add into a position, not thinking it's going to go to the moon, uh, and going in there. So, yeah, it's a, it looks busy. It's not actually that busy at all. So I got some drawings on here just from... Uh, trade room going into stuff, but uh, you'll see how actually simple it is. So, I mean, how many indicators do you really see on here? You see some lines, but you don't really see a lot of indicators, okay? Um, I can actually get rid of that, and I can shrink this way down. It really would just fall in a pattern, so it's pretty simple. Um, <laughs> but yeah, volatility never lies. Applied volatility is the best thing, because it's everybody putting their money where their mouth is. So, um, anyway, so right here, then we get a, a big surge, which usually signals a reversal, and we're at one deviation. So, it's just, I mean, it was a perfect move right off the deviation mark. And then, look, we came right up here to 0.7. We're going to pull back, and let's, let's look at what's happening around the broad market index like I was talking about. Trending down, but it's starting to bust back up. So, to throw a simple trend line, you don't have to be an ace at this, okay? Simple trend line. If there's busting back up, then you got, you know, some permission to go long again. But just use a, you know, a little common sense on it, and it'll help you out. But anyways, um, okay, so let's keep going. Let's get into a little more stuff. Um, one thing I'll tell you is trading is not as easy as we want it to be, but it's not near as hard as people think it is, okay? Uh, the platform I'm using, I use NinjaTrader because it's free, so you can try it all out for free. You can get multiple uh, brokers, multiple data feeds, uh, you get margins for 400 bucks. You get uh, commissions, four dollars round turn. You know, so um, you basically have a big advantage over a lot of the other ones who charge you a lot more margin and a lot higher commission because NinjaTrader is a broker neutral platform. So there's like 50 brokers that plug into it, and uh, you can also get free live futures data, free live forex data, you know, stuff like that plugged into it as well. We show you how to do all that. Um, okay, so again. Whenever you trade, you want to be very, very systems-based. You need exact entry, exact stop loss, and exact trailing stop. And uh, you have to have this to have consistency. Okay? And you want... It, when you get a trading opportunity, you can't doubt. You like you have to execute. But this helps if you have consistency. If you're like, this is when I get in, this is when I take stops, this is when I trail stops, then you can be consistent in your decisions, which will give you confidence to pull the trigger versus second-guessing every trade you make because you're looking at four different time frames and 30 different indicators, and they all say something different, and you're trying to, like, you know, read the stones to figure out whether to buy or sell. And that, to me, is very challenging. So... Um, and so the system that I built is, work, is basically how I've learned how the market works. Works to fill orders. It's how a market mover moves the market, pulls it back, and moves it further. It's really just a simple, you know, A, B, C, D style pattern, but a little, well, it is, it's better than that, but it's on that same concept. Um, and when you're trying to accomplish goals of limiting losses, letting profits run, you need a price action driven method, not an indicator driven method. Okay, you need the price to define what you're doing because indicators don't drive the market. Orders do. Orders are reflected in price. 
And these steps need to account not only for how the market moves, but another piece that's really missing from a lot of people's trading thing is your rules and your trading system, whether you use Apex's or anyone else's, okay, or you just make your own, whatever it is, your rules need to account for trading psychology, okay? Because that's going to help you actually implement your rules consistently. But what do I do when this happens? What do I do when this happens? What do I do when this happens? You know? And so we, I've actually, as we went through, and some of these rules that we built, like one of the rules we have uh, is called a trade runner trigger, okay? And that's when everything is going. We're in the trade, and we have not got a trailing stop. We've not got a pullback. We've not got a velocity bar. We've not got a deviation. Like all these things that we have happen, none of them have happened. The market's just going. What do I do? When do I trail my stop? Because psychologically, I'm, I'm more likely just to take that profit. And maybe I miss out on a massive move. Or I get greedy, and I'm like, I'm just going to be real. Or maybe I'm trying to be really rules-based. I'm just going to wait, and I give it all back. And that creates this big conundrum that you have to deal with that, that jacks with you on the next trade. So you want to have rules that help you manage you, which is the hardest part. Um, and uh, you'll be able to get access to all this stuff, Sergio, in a second. I'll show you where to get it, okay? All this information for free, okay? Um, so, you know... One of the things I do in my trading is, uh, let's see here, let me get into this. Uh, here are some examples, you know, as I go in and I enter. I'm going to give you a quick, this is going to be a quick overview. <coughs> it's impossible to teach all this to you in 45 minutes. What I want to do is I want to show you how I trade to see if you think it's worth your time to learn how to do at no cost to you except for your time. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll get in and say like there's a E, I'll, you know, I'll go short, there's an E, I'll go long, okay, and I'm going to go into these step by step, and I can show you a lot of examples. These are just a bunch of marked up charts with actual trades uh, that we've taken, you know, and I just, you know, I'll take screenshots as we go, but very, very, very systematic, okay, and you can see the charts are very clean, they're very simple to read uh, once you learn how to read them, and it doesn't take a whole lot to learn how to read them. As far as me, I'll spend like 30 seconds on that. I'm a trader, okay? I like to help other traders. I'm also an American, uh, North American Derivative Exchange. I'm an educational partner for them. I do education for an exchange. They ask me to help teach other traders how to trade. Um, I own Apex Investing, and I host a radio show, and I've developed tools that I use for my trading that I'm showing you. I mean, that's, that's all I'm going to spend on that. What matters is can you use this for yourself? So the few things that we're going to go over here in the next half hour, okay, is what bar size or type should you be using? I'm going to go over this one pattern that I use on every market. It doesn't matter if I'm trading on any exchange in the world, futures, forward, stocks, options, binaries, Nadex spreads, CFDs, one pattern that I use, okay? I'm going to talk about the three filters I use to help me eliminate bad entries because the number one way to limit your losses is to eliminate a bad entry. I'm going to go into the exact um, entry stop loss and position size method so you can know how much should you be, like, how many contracts or lots or shares should you be trading on any given position any given at any given time any day. Um, I'm going to go into the seven things I use to trail my stops, okay? Uh, one thing I don't do on, now I have multiple you know, ways that I trade, but on the elite system, the one that I do on a most consistent basis, I actually don't have a profit target. I am letting my profits run. And it allows me to make a lot more money doing that. It's because I'll trail my stops, okay? But I have a very defined way of how I trail my stops to give my profits room to run without giving up too much of them, okay? Um, and then I'll talk about sort of, you know, we sort of went into this already, but uh, the deviation levels. So how I know how far the market will move each day. And I can't even begin to, like, no matter what I tell you, it won't even come close to actually showing you. Um, how powerful and how accurate these numbers are. I mean, it's it's insane. Like, it blows me away every day. Um, I mean, day after day after day. But um, anyway, so first thing is remove time from the equation. Think about this. Time-based bars are illogical. Time doesn't move the market. Why do I have another bar on my chart? Well, because five minutes have passed. Because 10 minutes have passed. Because 30 minutes have passed. Because an hour has passed. Because a day has passed. Because the Earth is rotated one time, there's a new bar on my chart. 
What does that have to do with anything with the market and where it moves? It doesn't. Price, volume, order flow, time, passing. Now, time of day, yeah, that can you know be more volatile this time of day or less volatile this time of day. But just because some minutes have passed, I have new bars on my chart. That doesn't make any sense at all. Okay? So it's going to be choppy. It's going to jack up all my indicators and everything else. And so I don't use time-based bars. There's all kinds of bars out there. There's range bars, rate go bars, Heikinashi, which really isn't a bar. It's more of an indicator. But there's all these random different types of bars. And so I spent a lot of time studying different types of bars. I'm not a programmer. I can't program anything to save my life. But I trade a lot, and I hire programmers to try my ideas, to help me put my ideas into reality. And we have what's called diagnostic bars. And what they are is basically when the market moves from the open to the close, like in this case, six ticks, it'll make a new bar. Okay? Or if it moves from the open to the close on the other side, it'll make a new bar going the other direction. And whether that bar takes an hour and a half to form or whether that bar takes less than a second to form, it'll make a new bar. And so I get really clean charts. Like I don't like right here, I mean this bar over here took over an hour to form. So instead of having like a ton of bar, like 12 bars on here from five minute bars, I only have one. Because there's been no movement in the market. So it's not giving me another bar. And I can't even explain how like this this is so helpful to not have tons of just nothingness bars on your screen. It'll literally mess up every single indicator you have. Um, on panel two, uh, what I have right here, this is velocity. This is actually the, my time is like how slow a bar moves. I don't really pay attention to that too much. Um, but velocity is how fast a bar moves. And I pay a lot of attention to that. Because what that does is it is jumping past um, where where's our to see if it can find more? If it can't, it will reverse. If it can, it'll take off and keep going. And so it's an awesome way to actually measure and uh, for trailing stops. Because if the market's going to keep flying, well, I'm, by all means, let me trail my stop. But if it's going to reverse, by all means, let me trail my stop. So it's similar to a Renko, but um, it's not like your your standard Renko because it actually standard Renkos don't have wicks. And um, a lot of the all of them actually, because I've I've bought and tested every one of them. Um, the modified Rankos don't work accurately because they actually don't record all the information intra bar, intra tick, and they don't reset correctly. So every time you load a new chart, you get a new a new chart. So, um, so that I mean, that basically is one way to look at it. But um, it's sort of like a Ranko, but a lot better than a Ranko, uh, your traditional Ranko bar. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've been, Teresa, maybe you didn't notice, I've been bringing up real charts, live charts, like back and forth. So you know, here's oil right now this morning, long oil chart right there. So tons of charts. I can bring up any chart you want. But um, we only got 30 minutes. That's the limit. But I'm going to show you how to look at all these charts in real time, all you want for free, and no cards or nothing. Um, so again, you don't need 20 patterns. You don't need 200 patterns. The market can fill orders. One pattern shows this. Okay. Um, I have a whole video that's like an hour long that goes into like all the details in the diagnostic bars. I don't hide the secret of it or anything, but uh, I just can't spend an hour on just the bars. But I'll show you where you get access to all of that. Okay, for free. Um, so right here, like this is the apex pattern. It's pretty simple. Alert, pivot. I'll show you. Entry and take profit. Uh, so or completed pattern. So depending upon which way you're trading, and I show you the way that I trade, I usually don't take profit because I let my profits run. But so alert, pivot, and then you know potential entry, completed pattern is basically confirming it. And potential alert, pivot, potential entry, confirming the pattern, alert, pivot, potential entry. It's very simple. And this is auto charting it on there for you. You can try to do this manually. It's hard to keep up with because you have to look at the last 20 days to catch it up. But uh, right there, I mean, you just follow the pattern. It makes it super clean. And when you add the bars in to make it even cleaner, the pattern becomes very obvious because you don't have a whole bunch of miscellaneous minute bars clogging up your screen. And I use three filters, three really simple filters. Okay? One is a power line filter, which is every time there's a confirmed apex, that's a power line. It's a little green line right there. I only trade in the direction of the power line. So simple. Green power line, buy. Green power line, buy. 
green car bomb, buy. All right. And if it's red, I'll only sell. So very simple. That's one of my filters. Okay. Um, so basically APE, it's green, okay. Um, right there, you know, I mean, say if there was a, a red and a green one, why have a green power line? So I only buy. All right, it keeps everything straight for me. Doesn't matter where I've been on Apple, oil, Euro dollar, whatever, same rule. Uh, the other one is called the E bar breakout filter. So this is basically making momentum go in my direction on this bar. The standard we use is three ticks. We have settings for multiple instruments um, on the website. But, and you can even use larger, you know, if you want to. But uh, I usually use three ticks, four ticks like on oil. And it has to basically go three ticks above the E bar within two bars of the E bar for me to buy. Three ticks below the E bar within two bars for me to sell. And I'll answer your questions here in just a second. Let me try to get through some training. Otherwise, also, <laughs> we won't get anywhere. Um, so like right here, th th these filters help a tremendous amount, okay? And right here, you can go, you can short three ticks below the E, but we didn't get an entry three ticks below the E, right? So easily, somebody could have gone, okay, it's going to keep going and got in. We didn't get in. Three ticks, we don't get in. Three ticks, we don't get in. Three ticks below the E, we do get in, okay? So that would be an example of uh, doing the trades. And then same thing, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades, you would have avoided all the chop, completely avoided just by using three tick above the E filter, okay? Um, and then right there, there's an entry, finally you get the trade. So very simple trades. And then the BMX, this one honestly takes a little bit longer to teach you. It is the most powerful reversal um, pattern I know that sets up, and it basically is built on top of the E-bar breakout. And it's if you see a BMX, it comes within a BMX, which is sort of like a double, triple top, but if it comes right within that area, but it doesn't break the high, the orders failed to break the high, the market almost always goes into chop or reverses, so we don't have any entries while that happens. And so it avoids all of these potential losses. And actually, we have what's called a BMX reversal trade that teaches you how to take advantage of it. And uh, it's very, very cool. Like, I love doing it. Um, we do it constantly. And uh, it's, again, it's very simple. All these rules are very, very rules-based. It takes a little bit of time to learn them, but um, it's very worth it. Like, you can learn them in, like, a day. So you sit down. Um, and then entry, stop loss, and size. So what this is about, we already talked about, we're going to enter three ticks above the E, or three ticks below the E, right? I'm going to talk about where we put our stop loss in a second, because that's very important. And we have an exact price where we put our stop loss. But one of the things that we do is you need to know how much should I risk per trade. So if I have a $5,000 account, what I do is I, like to, I limit my risk to 5% a day, okay? So the most I can lose in a day before I'm done trading is if I, let's say I only have five grand would be 250 bucks. If I have 10 grand, 500. If I have 20 grand, 1,000. Okay, you know, I'm down the list. So now I want to be able to keep trading. I want to have the confidence to take a trade. If it loses, be able to take the next trade. If it loses, be able to take the next trade because that trade may be the trade that like the market just takes off. And if you knock out your account in one or two trades, you're really going to mess with your confidence. And the goal in trading is to survive. Okay. And so many people miss out on this 5% concept because it seems like such a small thing to them or such a big deal. Like, man, that's going to kill me. If you make 5% a day, now, obviously, in reality, are you going to make 5% every day? No. You're going to have losing days. You're going to have winning days. You're going to take money out of the account. But if you make five, just 5%, just 50 bucks on $1,000, one point on the S&P, and you do that for 20 days, you double your account. If you did that every month, and I know you're not going to do this. I'm just trying to give you the power of 5%. Okay, that's the point. 1,000 would go to over 1 million in less than 12 months. I'm just making 50 bucks per thousand, okay? Um, and, yeah, no, I'm going through all this. It was hard to cover the live and teach at the same time. So, sorry, there's an apex entry. But um, teaching and trading at the same time can be a little uh, difficult. So, exactly, Diane. So, obviously, I'm not talking about you don't have losses, you don't take money out. I'm just... I want you to get the concept of 5%. And more than anything, the point is risk management, okay? 
five percent divide the number by six that's what's the risk per trade okay and if you'll do that you could take six losing trades in a row before you were stopped out okay again six losing trades in a row before you'd be stopped out of a trade before stopped out for the day and you have a lot more i mean it's not like killer to go in and do a trade and then you know you're wiped out because you did one trade and we might get a bmx we'll see we're back at the 0.7 level on the dow right here so i can show you a bmx real quick okay so we're on the dow <laughs> sorry it's gonna be a little mix of y'all want a little bit of live trading so i'm trying to see if we see something but uh all right so we take the high okay the high right here is nine fourteen nine forty two we got three ticks below that. That's fourteen nine thirty nine. Okay, so we're within the BMX zone. All right, that's like all BMX right there, and we're at a 0.7 deviation level. So a short entry would actually be if we had three down closes. Okay, so this would be one down close, another, another. On that third down close, we would go short. Okay. Now, if you have a smaller account, and this is a bigger topic than I can even begin to start on here, there is something called Nadex, where you can trade Nadex spreads, not the binaries, that's not what I'm talking about, but the spreads, and you could actually trade like a tenth of a Russell contract. Okay, you could trade a tenth of an oil contract um, if you're in the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., you could look at CFDs. Okay, so that way you can basically get, basically what you can do is you take every tick down to a dollar for you. So instead of being 10 bucks, or you could do two of them or three of them or four of them or whatever. But that's how, if you have a smaller account, just trade a smaller derivative of that instrument, like a CFD if you're outside the U.S. or a Nadex spread if you're inside the U.S. And I have all the education on Nadex spreads. Nadex spreads are actually one of my favorite ways to trade. So it's one of the top topics that I teach on. But, um, okay, so we're watching oil, we'll, or we're watching the Dow here. Let me see if I can... All right, we got this set to always on top. We'll try to keep it up. So we can keep going, but keep our eye on it and see if we get a BMX reversal, okay? We'll see if one comes up. Um, over here. And it looks like I'm looking across all the markets. Um, S&P is about to enter. May miss the BMX zone. The Russell is just flat. The Nasdaq is heading down. Broad market is still in an uptrend, but it's pulling back. So this could be a good BMX reversal, a really good one. All right, so we have that trade up. We'll see how it goes. We've got 20 minutes left on a session here. Um, but just to keep you, keep, you know, have something going right there, okay? Um, all right. So if I only had five grand in my account, I should only be risking $41 a trade if I lose six trades in a row, which is pretty, I don't know about for you, but for me, pretty hard to lose six trades in a row, um, then I'd be done for the day. And so it lets me keep trading. The other cool thing is, is once I hit my 5%, I'll trail my stops, but I won't take new entries. Okay, I don't want to risk, you know, giving that money back, okay? And I'll stop. And sometimes I'm done in the first 30 minutes of the day, and I am done. And it is awesome. You get up. Boom, you hit the markets, you're up, and I walk. Yeah, I could have made a million dollars that day. I could have lost a million dollars that day, whatever, you know. But my goal was not to uh, – most of us did not get into trading to sit there for 8 to 10 hours and trade, okay? So, again, most of us get in there to make money and trade for a living and not trade for – like not make a living not, – not simply living to trade, but trade for a living. So – once I hit my 5%, I'm done. And sometimes, I mean, there's a lot of days I only trade 30 minutes to an hour. So I don't need to keep trading. And how many times have you made money and given it all back before the day was over? So this will help you a lot with that. Um, our stop loss is always five ticks below the P, or five ticks above the P. Okay, so if we're looking at, you know, a live chart over here. Like this is a long trade on the Dow that we're in, we're looking for a potential reversal. Uh, but we have a long trade over here. And, you know, so say if we pick this trade, then we'd be 
have our stop down here without going into you know just a billion details but we'd have our stop you know right down here okay five ticks below the P looks like the P is actually at what 14903 we move our stop down here to 14890 like seven okay and by the way that stop loss knowing where my entry price is three ticks above the E and my stop loss five ticks below the P lets me know what my risk is on the trade Therefore, I know how much I'm risking per minimum contract, and now I know how many contracts I can do on every trade. I'm not just randomly picking sizes, okay? Um, so that, that's how that works. All right, so five takes below the P, and then we're going to trail our stops. This is the most essential part in trading. Entry is easy. Stop losses, honestly, pretty easy. I can put it to a larger chart. The only issue is then we can't keep going on education so but I'll let you you can watch these charts live all day long for like a month okay uh, I'll show you how to do this so I have seven trailing stops obviously I can't teach all of them to you in 15 minutes but I'm gonna go over them just so you can see is this something that would be worth your time of looking into as a trader um, so we got the BMX like the barely missed X exit so let's say we get up here on this live trade and what's gonna happen is if within two bars so we already got one if we get one more we don't break the A if we break the A we get an X okay but one tick has to break that high if we don't do it within one more bar we're gonna get out of this long trade okay so again if we don't do it within one more bar we're gonna get out of the long trade so that's a BMX exit. They're basically, the market's failing to break out. Let's, let's just bell on the trade. Also, what we're going to do, let's say we're in trades. So uh, to look at, you know, trade over here, for instance, uh, let's say we get in on this trade this morning, just to make a, an easier example. So we got PE. So like PE, every time there's a PE, we're going to trail our stops. So... And I can go through and I can do all the live ones. I'm just trying to cover this in a short period of time. But every time there's a PE bar, we're going to get it. Every time there's an X bar, we're going to get it. Velocity bar. So let me show you some examples um, of this actually happening. Okay? We're, we're still watching this one over here to see if it breaks out or not. Um, and notice, I'm being patient. I'm not trying to force the trade. I'm not going to trade just because I want to trade. Um, so... Right here, um, usually uh, precedes a reversal that results in a loss. That's the BMX. So what, if this does reverse, it'll result in a loss if I stay in the trade. Okay? And if within two bars of a BMX, the X doesn't complete the exit, we're going to get out. Remember I said if that doesn't happen within one more bar, so we got one more bar, then we can get out of the trade. And this shows an example of a BMX where it gets in it within two bars, so we get out and notice how the market just falls on down. And so you got out of the trade at you know small profit actually on this trade, where you would have avoided a ton of losses um, as well by following the other entry filters. It's very it, it looks complicated. It, it is honestly really really simple. It's really high ray. <laughs> it's really good. Um, the goal is to let your profits run. The, the price has to hit the X before any trailing stops are implemented. Okay? And you don't let your profits, and this is huge, you do not let your profits dictate your exits. Your profit has nothing to do with your chart. Okay? Just because you're up or down has nothing to do with whether that chart is going to keep going or reverse. You let the chart dictate your exits. You shouldn't even be looking at your P&L. I tell people to not look at their P&L or look at points on their P&L, not actual dollars, because it's emotional. And you'll give up a ton of money. You'll get out too soon. You'll get out too late, whatever. The chart should dictate it. Your P&L, you shouldn't have to be worried about it because you shouldn't be trading too big of a contract size. If you'll control your risk, you can focus on the charts without hyperventilating. Okay? No, I'm not selling and buying breakouts of double tops and double bottoms. Um, so that's a, a BMX reversal would be like selling a double top, but that's not the main trade. That's not the elite trade. That's a reversal. That's what we're looking at right now because we're trying to find a trade in the webinar. Um, and I'm just watching the Dow right now. So 
Uh, we also have an oil setup to go short potentially as well. We'll see. I got my eye on that one. Um, another oil entry. Let's see here. So, um, so we're going to show our stops. Five ticks. So the fact we use five. So every time there's a new X, five ticks below the X, five ticks below the X, five ticks below the X, over and over. Very simple. Very systematic. Um, over here on the P bar, five ticks below the P, five ticks below the P, five ticks below the P. Really, really simple. Yeah, you can do this on the SOP as well. Um, so let's see. Maybe I can pull up Darby's screen. Yeah, see, Darby has all the indices up right now. So there, where's the S&P? Here you have the S&P. Right here. So he got the S&P. It just hit a deviation. There is an entry. It's about to touch that BMX zone, but it's still in. Right there. So that circle right there means he got in. He bought. So on the S&P for this morning. Um, so every time there's a P, we move it five ticks above the P, 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 above the P our trailing stop. Okay? Same thing if they're long, five ticks below the P, five ticks below the P, five ticks below the P. Really, really simple. Velocity bar. Velocity bar is when the bar has moved really fast um, and it's done it in less than a second. Okay, it's actually a zero, like it's not clockable by the system. And so the market is, is trying to find orders either it's going to fly or it's going to reverse. So Right over here, you know, we, we showed this example earlier. We didn't get in, we didn't get in, we didn't get in. We got in, three ticks below the E, awesome. Okay, there's an X. We trail our top to five ticks below the X. Then there's a velocity bar. Velocity bar happens right here, okay? We trail our stop, the market does a full reversal, keeps going, okay? Well, we're glad we trailed our stop, we took our profit. The market did decide to keep going again, great, we got in again. Three ticks below the E, we trail our stop, five ticks above the X there, and then we got another velocity bar, so we trailed it again. In this case, the market was able to find orders and break through. It kept going. We're glad we trailed our stop. So in either case, when we see a velocity bar, either it's going to reverse pretty fast or it's going to fly pretty fast. In either case, we want to trail our stop, okay? Um, I trade multiple markets, so you trade whatever market you want. I don't care if you're trading Apple, Google, Gold, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Take your pick. Um, but every chart's tradable. They all have apexes all over them. So it's pretty simple. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, the complicate, how complicated is it to sell three ticks below an E, but a stop loss five ticks above a P? When an X happens, trail your stop below the X. When you see another P, trail your stop five ticks above the P. If you see one of these velocity bars fire off, trail your stop five ticks above the bar that the velocity bar fired off. That's it. I mean, that really, like, it's simple. I don't know how to make it any simpler. So uh, what's the best time and hours to trade? It doesn't matter what system in the world you trade, okay? The best time and hours to trade are like 3 to 11 for consistency. So, because that's when the orders are happening. You got Europe, a little bit of Asia, okay? You got Europe, US crossover. But then what happens is Asia's, I mean, they're in bed. Europe's going home. Half the floor traders leave. And then you get a mixed bag of results in the last half of the day. So, unless there's like major news. So I'm just now I'm not saying you can't trade at any time of day. I got traders who trade at night, early in the AM, afternoon, morning. The easiest time to trade would be the best way to put it on any system is going to be between 3 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern time. That's just the easiest time. You can trade any time, but you're going to get the best movements consistently during those times. So a lot of traders will hop up and they'll trade like 7 to 11. You know. Um, the hardest time a lot of times is the Asian session, and then the afternoon session can be a little bit difficult because it can be awesome or it can be really choppy. Now, we have things that help out with that. We have a choppy market warning that ties in implied volatility and everything else. So, yeah, even in the U.S. pre-market. Oh, yeah. Because, um, we remember, we clean it up with the diagnostic bars. It helps a lot. Uh, P is pivot. A is alert. 
So it's an A alert of the apex, because the apex is like the top of a triangle of pyramid. So um, let's see here. So on the deviation, I only have like literally eight minutes. So on the deviation levels, um, we post these every day um, at 815. They also auto feed into your charts. And what they're doing is they're actually pulling implied volatility to allow you to uh, know how far the market says the market's going to move. So they're also in our side. They'll feed into your chart for you. And what we do is we actually use these. I noticed this sort of by accident. Um, on my radio show every day, I, I run through the markets. And I talk about how far they moved on the deviations. And I noticed, just because I use the 10-minute charts, they're fast to flip through. And I don't, really, I don't trade the 10-minute bars, but I just noticed they have a really consistent pattern, that if they closed above those bars, that that made a great trailing stop. And... Again, trailing stop, not entries. Okay, just a great trailing stop. If my, none of my, a lot of times, most of my other trailing stops will trigger before this happens anyway. But just in case they don't, I got seven possible trailing stop triggers. And so, if it closes above a 10-minute deviation line, I trail my stop. If it closes back below it and then above it again, I trail my stop. Five ticks below the bar. Closes above it again, I trail my stop. Above it again, I trail my stop. So this right here finally hit the trailing stop on this bar. Market fell 20 points on gold after that. So, and there's, I mean, this is daily examples. So you can find these every single day. Short, we do the exact same thing. Closes below it, trouble stop. Closes below it, trouble stop. Closes above it, then below it, trouble stop. I mean, it's it's really not that much. If we put it all together, we bought in three ticks above the E, okay? It hit the X. We got a new P, we trailer stop. We got an X, we trailer stop. We got a velocity spike right there. Velocity, again, that means the bar moved a full bar length within, like, less than a second. Velocity spike, trouble to stop, new P, trouble to stop, new X, trouble to stop, new P, trouble to stop. 10-minute bar closed above the deviation level, trouble to stop. Hit an X, trouble to stop, P, trouble to stop, velocity spike, trouble to stop. So we have all these trades right here just using these trailing stops, okay? The trade runner, I'm not going to go into that a whole lot. That's basically the market moves half a deviation and you haven't trailed your stop to trail it. Um, and then we have another one called what happens if you have a little bit of apex, which have a rule that helps it give it a little time to move before you trail your stop so you don't get stopped out too soon. Um, and that's basically if the market, like, see how this is like APEX all in like three bars? What I do is I wait for six higher highs or six lower lows. So here we get like one, two, three, four, five, six higher highs, and we trail our stop to break even. And then we'll use all the other things like PE, velocity bar, deviations. Um, so questions coming up like crazy. Uh, yeah, they're all available on Ninja Trader for you. That's the only one they are available on. Um, now these aren't cherry pick trades. So these are just trades, period. FOMC. I pulled up the FOMC earlier, man. Right in the middle of it. Here it is. Cherry picked it all. This is every freaking day. Right there. Here's FOMC. There's where it came out. Short trade, short trade, short trade. Small loss, big long trade, massive down move. We caught all of them. Right in the middle of the FOMC announcement. No cherry picking at all. <laughs> yeah. So um, <laughs> I know plenty of people do that, but this is every day. Okay. Um, in the live trade challenge, I used to set up using a DOM. Um, you said they layer into their trades, layer into. Talking about when I was trading against Rob, me and Rob were trading. Um, I guess that's what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, that was a while back. Um, oh, I know some people are going to layer in two trades, and you'll see absolute depth of market in the DOM. I did a lesson on the DOM um, last, I want to say on the last webinar, I did last Thursday, and I went and I actually showed how you can see the layers in the DOM to know where stops will be. Uh, because you don't want your stop loss to be in front of a massive order in the DOM. You want it to be behind it, and you want your exits to be in front of it, not behind it. So depending upon how you're trading. Uh, so I did that lesson like in big detail last week. Right now, I don't really see anything in the DOM on at least a DAO of merit. So, and yes, we got our three uh, below. So we got our entry. So unfortunately, we're not going to be on here long enough to be able to do it. But... Uh, so see, I got one, two, three down closes. So the technical short would be here. Your stop loss. 
the five ticks above. So three ticks below, or actually be like one tick below this bar is where you actually would get in. So we just had a BMX reversal. We'd also be out of the trade on the Dow. And I'd be very careful on any trades on other indices simply because now we had a BMX on one indice, the likelihood of it happening on other ones. And uh, let's see here, I'll show you this one. I know I got a big request. Okay, see how we got that Darby markup at BMX, that same one we were talking about? You got it right there on this chart. Let's make it a little larger so you can see it. You can actually go into the trader's charts and you can zoom in on them and stuff. So we put that right there. Somebody was asking to see the S&P. Right over here, here's the S&P. So see, it's like right at, remember I said be careful, like right at one deviation? It's right at one deviation, bouncing off of it. And we have the Dow just hit a BMX. So that's why I watch all four indices at the same time. But it's bouncing perfectly off one deviation. Like that's as far as the market should move today. It should not go up any further. So, um, let's see. Okay, so to get access to this Elite Toolkit for free, um, all the training on it for free, access to the trade room where you can hop in literally right now for free, okay, access to hundreds of hours of education, forums, um, if you want to learn about Nadex, we have binary and spread scanners on that. Um, you can check it out. I mean, the diagnostic bars, the bar sizer, the timer, the range bars, the velocity, everything that goes with it. Um, all the deviation levels. We give, we're giving, basically giving you two, it sounds funny, but two two-week free trials. Okay? And so let's go over to apexinvesting.com forward slash pub. All right? So go over and open that link up. All right, and whenever you do that, um, let's see here. Then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to log in right away. And let me show you this so you know exactly where to go once you get there. Okay. So go to apexinvesting.com, but go to, again, forward slash pub. And then fill out the form on the page. Uh, and once you fill that form in, and it looks like there's a lot of people hitting it right now, which is good. Uh, but fill the form out. It won't cost you anything. And then right under the Elite menu, once you log in, you'll actually be able to see uh, a free trial link. Okay? So when you go to that free trial link, then uh, you'll be able to activate your free trials. And again, we have two two-week free trials. And that'll allow you, the reason I do that, so you, know, you get into it for two weeks, but then something comes up, and so you're not able to access it. There we go. It's going sort of slow. So if you'll give it a minute, it looks like a lot of people are hitting it. Um, there we go. All right, so this will take you directly to the free sign-up page. And then when you log in, okay, um, you'll be able to go to the login page. Let me pull this up. Going really slow. Um, it's only because everybody's in the exact same page at the exact same time. But if you'll give it a minute to catch up, you'll be able to get in and you'll be able to activate everything. All everything's there, and there's like a step one, a step two, and a step three. Okay. And so step one will say, what do you need to do? Where do you need to go? Where is everything? So like watch that first. Okay. Step two. It's going to say, how do you install the indicators and what do they all mean? Okay? So, yeah, there's the free member sign-up form right here. Okay, I'm already in, so it's not going to let me sign up again. But there's the free member sign-up form. Once you're in, um, first thing you're going to do is go over here to the uh, trials, okay? And to click on that, get free trial. And we've actually enabled it where you can do it twice, okay? So the charge, um, after the free period, after you do the two two-week free trials, you can do either a monthly or an annual option, which includes the trading room and everything we talked about. It's 200 bucks a month, which should pay for itself before you're done with the trial if you're trading. Um, or 1800 a year gives you three months off. Okay? What this system does, that people need to understand how to read a chart's price action. Um, no, because we're actually teaching you how to read the price action. That's the whole point of the system. 
So the system will teach you how to do that. You don't have to know a single chart pattern because we're only going to teach. Well, you don't have to know. You don't have to know other chart patterns. We're going to teach you one pattern. Okay. Uh, but go here, click on the elite training, getting started. Go here, click on the elite indicators. Okay. It says you know how to set up NinjaTrader, get your data feed set up. How to install the indicators. Here's actually the link to download Ninja. Here's the link to download the toolkit. Um, so all that's right in there. Here's the link to get your free futures for stock data, all that stuff. Um, and then here's the actual rules. So the step-by-step -step detailed training on every rule and PDF file is all built in there as well for you. Okay. Um, and it's pretty cool. We actually built it into a forum. So every video, you know, a 15, 20 minute video right here in step three. And if you don't do step one and two and first, you're going to be lost. Okay. So do step three. Every video um, has a section where you can put questions on it. And then you also can log in immediately to the trade room right up here at the top and ask questions. Okay. Um, is it available for MetaTrader 4? No, MetaTrader 4 actually is not powerful enough to handle it. So, um, and we have not yet converted into TradeStation. I had stuff built into TradeStation, but honestly, I can make stuff 100 times faster and better in Ninja Trader than I can in TradeStation. And most traders coming in, they like the access to the free data. They don't have to pay for it like you do in TradeStation. They like the access to the free platform. They don't have to pay for a platform. And they like the access to the lower margins and lower commissions that you get in Ninja versus TradeStation. So basically, it's people like going to Ninja better because there's a lot more uh, benefits. Um, and all the uh, feed providers are right here. So let's go over here, free data. Okay. So yeah, as soon as when you log into the room, it actually it captures the log. It keeps everything in there. Like there's a short that we just took on oil. So the trade room log is right there for you. And it records it. So you can go up. No credit card, pop in, sign up right away, try it out, everything free, full month. All access. Okay. So all available on NinjaTrader. All free data, everything. So the powers within you, Ray. <laughs> Define rich. To me, rich is not having to work anymore. So it works for me. <laughs> All right, cool. Y'all try it all out. It costs you nothing. It will cost you time. And in my opinion, it is definitely going to be worth it for you to spend some time looking at it. Okay? Um, as soon as you log in, if you have any uh, tech support issues, right here under questions, help desk, tech support, billing, all that right there. Okay? Submit that in. We uh, check it like 10 times a day. Trade as many as you want, as you can keep up with. So I trade about eight at a time. Most people, one to three. Diagnostic bars are measured on if it moves up or down six ticks. Tick bars are if like 100 ticks have happened, then a new bar is made. But I'm going to go ahead and have to wrap it up, but I'm definitely available for additional questions, okay? So everybody have a great day.